and I'm going to actually go through Holy Priest um, viewpoint of the glyphs um, for PvP and I'll <coughs> comment on PvE applicability as well where I uh, think it's appropriate. Alright, so let's uh, let's get started. So for Holy Priests, we have a lot fewer dedicated glyphs just for Holy Priests. I'm not sure why we don't get much love, uh, but we don't. Um, Circle of Healing is one of the few that are dedicated to Holy. Your Circle of Healing spell heals one additional target, but its mana cost is increased by 35%. Circle of Healing costs 9,600 mana. So that's pretty substantial increase in mana cost. Um, I don't really see that as a, a very viable PvP uh, glyph. Um, you really want to conserve your mana as much as possible. In PvP, it wouldn't be useful unless there was a fight that there was constant AoE damage and the raid was fairly grouped up. In that case, and you were constantly in your um, chakra, uh, chakra sanctuary doing AoE heals, and then your circle of healing uh, spell will hit an additional target and will possibly be useful. Otherwise, I don't think you're going to want to use this um, glyph. <clears throat> uh, glyph of Desperation. So this one's going to allow you to use your Guardian Spirit even while stunned. So this is situational, just like for Disc Priests. If you're in a PvP situation with um, rogues, uh, particularly, uh, where you're going to get stun locked, it's nice to be able to uh, cast um, Guardian Spirit on yourself. <clears throat> um, but I don't really, I personally don't think I'm going to be taking this in, in PvP, even with rogues. Um, I just don't see it as something that, you know, I'll just try to work around those situations. Um, like I said before on the discipline um, video, it would be really nice if that desperation glyph allowed you to cast desperate prayer while stunned. And if that were added so that it included that, allows pain suppression, guardian spirit, and then I would add desperate prayer and spectral guise to be cast while stunned. Then I would, I would say this glyph would be a viable glyph, meaning it would be, um, it would be something that you would consider actually using. Without that, it's just not quite good enough. Um, okay, next one is the glyph of dispel magic. Um, your dispel magic also dis, uh, damages your target for. Um, 9733 three, holy damage when you successfully dispel a magical effect. Okay, well, um, that might be a little bit more beneficial for a holy priest who's PvPing and using the DPS chakra kind of playstyle that I use. Because here, if I'm if I'm in DPS chakra, um, I have uh, my holy fire and my smites are are 75% cheaper and I actually run around using inner fire. Um, so with both the chakra chastise, which increases DPS and inner fire up, this now increases to 12,225 uh, holy damage, which is quite nice. So let's glyph that, glyph of dispel magic. Um, one of the things, uh, well, I'll get to it later. So here we go. Dispel Magic is our offensive dispel. Um, 12.225. So I'm going to dual Darken Priest. And Darken Priest has promised to go easy on me because this is a demonstration. Okay, Darken Priest, please go easy on me. Good buff. Okay, so he's got Fortitude. Um, he's going to go into Shadow. He's going to um, Power Shield himself. 
and renew himself and now I'm going to dispel him. There are 10, 1, 3, 4, 9, 8, 5, 1, 0, 6. Okay, well, so pretty much everything's off of them now. I'm not sure why those... There's a crit that didn't do anything. Um, the damage actually, as you can see, does cause him to have pushback, which might also help if he's trying to tag the flag. So I would say that probably, I'm not sure why, um, it's not saying in the um, spell tooltip on Dispel Magic, the... Um, the damage effect, which is weird because most of the glyphs, when you choose them, sh um, show that. Um, it's not really damaging the target for 12, 225. Well, perhaps it is, and perhaps in Shadow they have 15% less damage taken. So I won't have them go into Shadow, but see the f upfront ones seem to get more, all right. Dispelled Renew, that one was absorbed. Dispel the Shield, 4989. I'm not sure why the damage isn't the way it should be. Um, so it looks like Glyph of Dispel Magic is a bit bugged. Um, but still, it looks like if it were not bugged, it would be a little bit good. There's some uh, pushback there. All right, so... The next one, Fade, I already talked about this on the Discipline Priest PvP video. Um, I will just say, um, as a Holy Priest, we don't have um, as good damage mitigation like a, whole, like a Discipline Priest does. So perhaps as a Holy Priest, uh, having Fade might be a little bit more desirable than for a Discipline PvP Priest um, because... This will give us 10 seconds, so we could shield ourselves and then fade. So then we've, we've got an absorb on ourselves, plus we've got an additional 10% damage reduction, um, which might help us with a little bit more survivability. So I would say that fade for a holy PvP priest, um, that's a pretty good option. Fear Ward, um, I want to correct myself on the previous... Um, Discipline PvP Glyph uh, video, um, I said reduces the cooldown and duration of your ward by 60%. It's 60 seconds. So instead of it being a 3-minute cooldown, it's a 2-minute cooldown, which means you can use Fear Ward more often. Um, if you pop Fear Ward and then someone fears you, it's on a 3-minute cooldown, but with this Glyph, it's only on a 2-minute cooldown. Um, that might be good on a on say if you're in an arena fight with a warlock and a priest, and you know that priest has Psy fiend and you're just going to be um, fear after fear. It might be uh, good to have that, but it is taking up a slot for something that's kind of situational. Okay, holy fire. So holy fire, even for holy, because in chakra. DPS. I'm not sure why my inner fire keeps disappearing, but it does. All right, so maybe changing glyphs. Actually, changing glyphs removes your inner inner state, inner fire, inner will. Um, so, holy fire is good to have. Holy fire, instant damage with the ticking dot. Um, as you can see. That was 18,000, and it wasn't even a crit with a dot. This Holy Fire crit for, for 1K, and then 500 crits, and a bunch of them. One, two, three, four, like a four extra K on top of that, just from the dot. And it's doing a decent amount of damage. Being able to do this on the run, 37k crit, 
Darken Priest is already down to about 50%. So... All right, so that was Holy Fire. I actually like that as a DPS priest. You know, I, I'm a healing priest, of course, but what I'm saying is I, I like to PvP as a Holy Priest in DPS Chakra, which um, really works well with the Glyph of Holy Fire because um, I can. it's an instant. If someone's trying to tag the flag, it causes them to have pushback and it'll interrupt what they're doing. Sorry, I don't mean to pick on Darken Priest. All right. Next one is Holy Nova. I showed this one on the um, Discipline one. Uh, the one thing about Holy Nova is um, when it's a, considered an AOE. So if you are in, all right, so I'll just do it now. See how much damage it does. It probably does pitiful damage, two, three. The damage is being increased because I'm in DPS Chakra. But it's healing me for 7, 6, 7, 4. If you remember on the Discipline Priest was doing 5, oh, well, but it has multiple targets. Um, in Serenity, 8, 7, 8, 6. All right, but the damage is reduced. So the healing is increased, but the damage is reduced. Um, but you notice, Darken Priest is suffering pushback every time he gets a hit from Holy Nova. See that? That's interrupting Darken Priest's channel if he were channeling or uh, trying to tag a flag. Each time, even though this damage is very low, it's interrupting that, and I can just spam it. Um, and the cost is 7,800. Um, it took me down quite a bit of mana here, um, but not a whole huge a lot. I mean, stopping someone from tagging the flag is really important. Um, I'm so used to having Holy Nova that I just sometimes go to hit it, and I'm really frustrated when I don't have it, um, when it's not glyphed. And I'm really pissed that I have to take a glyph spot to get it. Um, because um, it's a, it's one of our spells that we have had since forever, and um, we should still have it. Um, okay, so um, I'm just going to do this also, um, because I have to correct something from one of my previous glyph. I talked about Shadow Word Pain as being able to do instant damage on someone. Um, but I did a, uh, battleground and I noticed I was spamming shadow word pain, which now has a upfront damage. I'm going to go into my damage chakra, go back and put inner fire back on. When you're changing glyphs, remember to go back and set your inner fire or inner will because it comes off for some stupid reason. All right, now watch this. So if I hit, um, darken priest with shadow word pain. You know, it looks like he's suffering pushback on the initial, but it isn't working. I tried that. Oh, look, Darken Priest is taking a ton of damage. All right, so, um, So for some reason, I'm not sure, it's going to have to be checked out a little bit more, but I don't think Shadow Word Pain, um, the initial damage from it, is enough to actually stop someone from uh, capturing a flag. Um, so that, that would make other things like the Glyph of Holy Nova a little bit more attractive because you need to have a spell that you can... interrupt someone uh, from capturing a flag. Okay, um, inner fire, uh, this should be deleted from the memory banks of the universe, not gonna talk about it. Um, did this one already on one of my previous, my discipline PVP. Um, I already demonstrated, I showed it, that armor um, 
an inner fire, I'm at 32%. When I add the inner fire glyph, it goes to 35 something percent, which is its pitiful amount of increased armor. Um, you're much better off taking fade. So don't ever, under any circumstances, ever use the glyph of inner fire. Okay. Inner focus is not usable by holy priests. What the heck? Is this just because only disciplined priests need to be able to cast without uh, being interrupted. No, holy priests need that too. And I'm not sure why this is um, something that's discipline only. Or at least have a holy version of something that gives us something similar. Um, because we need it as well. Um, inner Sanctum gives us a 6% um, damage reduction um, to um, spell damage when in inner fire. Now the curious thing is, if you're a holy priest, more so than a disc priest, um, I'm going to be in my chastised chakra and I'm going to have my holy fire up or my inner fire up all the time. And you notice as soon as I did that, the spell warding popped up. Why don't they call this spell warding? Glyph of Inner Sanctum. I'm not really in whatever. I don't know. So, <clears throat> should be Glyph of Spell Warding. Um, so, it is 6% uh, reduced spell damage. So um, I guess I could take this off and see what the ticks of Shadow Word Pain look like. Yes. One, one, two, two. One, one, two, two. My, um, my Darken Priest doesn't have PvP gear. Which is fine because for this demonstration it'll work. So one one two two. Now he's got an instant mind blast. No, don't do it. Alright, so with the spell warding up, let's do it again. One oh five four. One oh five five. So you can see it's reducing it by six percent. Is that a whole lot? It was one one something before. Now it's one oh something. I it's more of a reduction. The bigger these numbers are, but I'm um, I'm not um, I don't know. Not great. I'm still thinking that this fade is way better. So let's go back and do fade. All right, and let's have, I'm going to have the cast started. Shadow or pain, 1122. One, one, I'm going to fade. 1 0. Oh. So that's better, see? 1 0. Oh. So it's, it is 10% more, not 6%. It's giving me more damage. Of course, it, oh, these things. The fade is up, so. And this thing lasts 18 seconds, and my fade only lasts 10 seconds. So, but anyway, it did reduce damage by more than the glyph of um, inner sanctum. A leap of faith. So, this removes movement impairing effects on your leap of faith target, allowing you to actually leap them, even if they are. Uh, impaired movement so that's good but it's situational just like I said for the discipline priest I'm not sure that this is good enough by itself to be worth taking up a glyph slot levitate okay this needs to be deleted from the memory banks of the universe because again um, you don't need if you need a speed boost and you need something to give you a speed boost the inner sanctum will give you 16% um, movement speed increase. Well, all you have to do is click inner will. 
This requires you to click levitate and it gives you only 15%, 16%, 15%. So why would you choose a something that only increases your movement speed and if it only increases your movement speed, it doesn't even do anything else. This one does other stuff as well. This one's way better because it's more movement speed and it does other things. This one's just movement speed and it's not even a, as good movement speed. It's really, Sysglyph of Levitate should be at least say 30%, half of what your normal um, say body and soul or angelic feather is. Um, otherwise it's not worth it. Um, this needs to be removed from the memory banks of the entire universe. Okay, so late spring. Um, as you can see, I have it. If you're a holy priest, PVP or PVE, you probably, no, you definitely want to glyph this. Okay, there's no reason not to. Um, it just works so much better. In most of my PVP fights, um, the Light Spring Renew tends to be my in my top three heals, um, which is very strong. Um, so I would say definitely use it. This Lightwell Glyph, just plain old Glyph of Lightwell, um, increases the total amount of charges on your Lightwell by two. So you start out with 15. This will add two more. I'm not really sure who thought that that was worthy of a glyph. I mean, okay, so imagine this glyph. Here's a glyph, and it takes your light well, and it makes it into this super awesome spell, this awesome cooldown. Now here's a glyph, and it just adds charges by two. Who thinks that these two glyphs are equivalent in their capability for taking up a major slot? I think that Blizzard was probably still in the uh, mindset of prime glyphs, major glyphs, and minor glyphs. This here would probably be like a minor, this would be like a major, this would be a, or a prime, and this would be a major, um, because it's not quite as good as the awesome ones, but, but still provides a little bit better than just a minor glyph. Um, but I want to try something. I'm going to glyph this light well glyph and glyph the light spring glyph um, to see if it's going to add two more heals to my light spring. Now, see, my light spring is saying 15 heals, but let me go down to the actual light well. It says 15 heals. So I have this increase by two. It's still saying 15 heals. All right, let's click on it. All right, it does say 17. So the tool tip is wrong. It says 17. I cast this, all right, now I noticed, and I told you in one of the other things that when you cast something that's glyphed uh, out of combat and then you change a glyph, so now let's change this glyph to something else, like Holy Nova, right? This light spring still has 17 charges. Um, and I don't actually have the glyph of adding two charges to light spring. So, um, Okay, so what I'm going to say is probably something that I'm not sure if this is an exploit or it's the way, it is the way that Blizzard designed the, the system where if something is glyphed, when you cast it, it has that ability. I noticed this when I was testing out Levitate and I glyphed out of Levitate, but it didn't remove the buff that I had. So now what I did was I glyphed the additional two charges. I dropped my light spring it has the 17 charges, and then I just popped out and changed my glyph to something else again. And now I have a glyph to light spring down that's got 17 charges, and I don't have to waste my glyph slot to get it. And in PVE, before a boss pull, because this lasts for three minutes, I now have a light spring with 17 charges, and I don't have to waste a glyph slot 
Oh, also, I could probably get rid of Light Spring. Let's see, it's a Light Spring. Let's see. What else would I want? <laughs> um, Prayer of Mending. It's just... Alright, so now it's still a Light Spring. Um, I don't have the Glyph of Light Spring glyphed, um, as you can see. And I'm going to... Take some fall damage. I don't want to zone out because I know what happens when I zone out. Oh, I could have just had Dark and Priest give me some damage. It's a Light Spring, still. And I don't have Glyph of Light Spring. And see, it says 16 charges. All right, so, um, yeah. You want to Glyph it. Now, the only thing is that if you unglyph the light spring, you won't be able to put down another one if you're working on a boss fight. So, what I would say is, um, I would just keep your light well glyphed as light spring, whether you're PvP or PvE. But certainly, there's no reason out of combat before you start uh, a fight or anything to just go ahead, glyph it and then drop it and then glyph out of it if you really if you really feel like it the only thing it's going to cost you is two tomes of the clear mind to do that all right uh master spell um has a 15 second master spell has a 15 second cooldown um with a cast time of 1.38 seconds it's not that slow to begin with and interrupts people aren't going to they're going to try to interrupt your master spell, of course, but their interrupts have a cooldown, and I just don't think it's worth a glyph slot for that. Um, let's get down here. This one, um, for a holy priest, the only reason you would probably want to glyph your power word shield, you're not going to want to cast power word shield. It's 18,300 mana. The upfront heal from this will refresh your renew. It always used to when you were in Serenity Chakra. So let's see, I will renew myself. All right, nine, eight, seven, six. I'm gonna shield myself with a heal and it refreshed renew. So that was, um, I'm not sure why that's so much better than just heal, but it is a way to instantly refresh it, even though, you know, um, uh, there, and it refreshed. Okay, well, anyway, I guess, um, I don't know. I, I don't think this is really that great. You might like it. Prayer of Mending, if you take... This talent, Divine Insight, which is super awesome for Holy. And if you are a Holy Priest, I strongly suggest you take this talent because it is super awesome throughput on your um, Prayer of Mending. Because whenever you cast Greater Heal or Prayer of Healing, you have a 40% chance that your next Prayer of Mending will not trigger its cooldown and jump to each target instantly. So you want to have five and not four because five is more than four, even when the first one has a 60% increase. Um, so, yeah. Um, purify, so when I dispel um, a magical effect, um, it will provide a 3% heal, heal. So, let's see. Actually, I, I should have kept that. So let's see, dual. All right. Um, and it's purify. Where is my Purify spell? I know I can do it, but I kind of want to just put it down here somewhere. 
really, really want to do this quickly. All right. Um, so let's say I get a dot on me and I want to purify myself 11 K heal. All right. Which actually reserve reversed all the damage that that did. And it actually procced echoes of light. So it procced mastery. That's interesting. And that's actually, um, good. I don't know that that can crit or not, but it does proc mastery. So here I'm losing some health, but if I purify myself, 11K, and I'm getting echoes of light. The downside to this is you can only do this every eight seconds, so it would be a dispel, a heal that um, you only do every eight seconds. Is that good? Well, there could be a PVE fight where there is a dispel mechanic and the the 3% of maximum health, maximum health is pretty high as you can see that it's 11k heal. Um, it might be worth it. All right, reflective shield. So this allows my shield so now Darken Priest is going to hit me, but take damage. See, he's taking damage and it's actually causing pushback. These are like 1K. So he has a dot on me. He's taking pushback every time. I'm not sure if it really is pushback. No. No shadowy apparitions. Oh, fine. All right, so for a disciplined priest, that's quite good. For a holy priest, since our shield only does 56K, it's not as much. I wouldn't use it as a holy priest, but it's probably nice as a disciplined priest. Uh, renew. This one is very good as a Holy Priest because our Renew already is strong. And in Serenity Chakra, it's even stronger. So 6K up front heal. 13.6. 13.6. Or 13.7 almost. 13.7. So it's pretty darn good. and it can still be refreshed. Notice that when I refresh it, it goes to 12 seconds rather than the nine seconds that it was. But the ticks are still the stronger tick. I don't know if this is intended or not, but it's going all the way back to the maximum duration, right? Because Serenity is refreshing the Renew, but your ticks are stronger. So this Glyph of Renew um, on a Holy Priest in Serenity Chakra is quite good because it's just constantly ticking these stronger ticks. And as long as I refresh them before it runs out, it just keeps going longer than it would have. So Renew is really good, really, really good, Holy Priest. So um, especially with this refresh mechanic, and I didn't get it fast enough, but um, with the refresh mechanic, it's great. It makes it even better. So this um, Renew Glyph is really good for PvE. It's really good for PvP because you want to instantly heal for as much as possible. And as you saw, because... Um, it's a faster heal. It'll, it'll heal a lot quicker and then you can renew again um, without overwriting the original one. You can renew again faster, giving another upfront heal. So if I'm in DPS chakra, it's not going to hit for as much. 5-3 upfront and then 11-9. But after the third tick, it's going to run out and then I can just quickly do it again and get the upfront heal. And just keep it going faster. 
and you don't have to wait for the renew to run out. If its tick has gone off, but it's still counting down, but it's not enough haste for you to get another tick, you can go ahead and refresh it as soon as that third tick is gone. All right, so as you can see, it's good. Um, and the healing is almost 12K and it was 13, you know, almost 14K um, in Serenity Chakra. But the best part about the Serenity Chakra was the refresh mechanic, which refreshed a renew that's ticking 33% stronger and it's ticking not one third as often. It's ticking its full duration, I think. Let's just do one. And I'll refresh it. Let's see. So we got one tick, two ticks. So it's refreshed. One, two, three, four. So it, it had five. Had five ticks at the bigger number. Um, after it was refreshed. All right. Um, this Scourge Imprisonment um, reduces the cast time on Shackle by one second, which is good to shackle a DK's um, pet um, if they are they sick their pet on you a lot. Otherwise, it's kind of a waste of space. The Shadow Word Death is nice to have because you can not use Shadow Word Death unless somebody is below 20%. When they are below 20%, it's four times as much. I'm not going to trust these tooltips anymore because they don't seem to be the right numbers. Um, Smite is also good for Holy in the DPS chakra, but I wouldn't use it. And the reason is because even though we're smiting a lot, um, it only works if the Holy Fire um, buff is up. And I tend to just target around and, and smite people. And I'm not really sure if I'm keeping the holy fire buff on them or not um, so and the extra damage is not really necessary because we're already getting extra damage anyway 15 percent extra so i wouldn't i wouldn't worry about it now if you were uh pveing and for some reason they asked you to just go all out dps as much as you can do because you're a extraneous healer and you're not needed on this fight um, but you can't go respec because like me you want to have two healing specs I actually like having both Discipline and Holy Priest as my specs because I like playing them both and I played the new shadow and I don't like it I don't even like it as much as the old shadow. It's not as uh, fun um, So I'm probably going to just stay as a disc and holy healer and switch between the two um, as I as necessary um, but if you um, needed to do as much DPS as possible, you would want to be in your holy spec, you would want to be in your DPS chakra, and you would want to have this smite glyph, because it is a DPS increase. All right, Spirit of Redemption is um, an extra 10 seconds on your um, improved death form, so that is actually a lot of, uh, it works really well, it's free healing. I like when I, you know, I don't like dying, but when I am dead, I like the fact that as a holy priest, I can heal my ass off. I can click divine him and just send out mega heals. Um, having an extra 10 seconds would be nice, but I think it's more of a desperation period. And I don't want to increase my desperation period. I, I want to heal as much as I, as I can and then get out of it. If there's no uh, friendlies around me, having a longer duration doesn't really help me um, because there's no one to heal and sometimes I just click out of it so I can res faster so that's it that is a review of the holy uh, holy view from the the glyphs here um, overall I really like how both the discipline and the holy priest is playing for both um, PvP and PvE I really like them both um, I'm liking some of the unique abilities that Holy has in PvP and PvE, and I'm liking some of the unique abilities that the Discipline has. Um, I think they're both really interesting, and I think that Priests are in a very good position. Um, 
discipline isn't as underpowered as it as it was on beta. Um, the healing output is less, but the utility is still there. The absorbs are still there. Um, they're going to be able to uh, contribute a lot more as the amount of damage can be predicted, as it can be predicted better. So I really don't see, and you know, I'm thinking the, the synergy is that if you have a raid with a disciplined priest um, putting out absorbs and then a, um, a raid healer that's healing the raid, it's really good synergy. And if you actually have a raid that has a disc priest and a holy priest, there is very good synergy between the two. Um, because one is um, putting out a lot of absorbs, the other is just putting out a lot of heals. And um, they kind of complement each other very well. Plus, priests have a lot of utility as it is. So um, I think things are really good for priest healers. Um, I think that the expansion is going to be very fun for us. And I, I really can't wait to get to level 90 because of these uh, additional talents here. Um, cascade um, it really is good for raid healing and it gives us uh, especially for discipline priests you're kind of lacking in the raid healing department you don't have your divine hymn anymore and cascade is a really good um, raid heal that's gonna help put out um, divine aegis bubbles when it crits it would be really nice if cascade was added to spirit shell as a way to um, distribute spirit shells onto the raid I really think that should be added, um, but anyway, okay, so there you have it. Um, you now know about a little bit of how glyphs work um, out of combat. You know now that you can actually add glyphs, cast things with the, with the buff that that glyph gives you, and then switch it out, and then start going into combat, um, which gives you a little bit more flexibility with which glyphs you want to choose. You can add your two charges to light spring, pop the light spring down, and then switch out into something that you normally run with, say renew. Um, I would keep the glyph that you switch out most frequently right here because if you're like have only seconds before going into combat or for a, before a pull or something like that, you want to be able to pop the new glyph in really quickly like and now that they don't have a cast time it's easy to just switch them really quick um, rather than having a mouse all the way up to here or mouse over to here just keep this one as the glyph that you change keep these two as the glyphs you run with most of the time um, okay so I hope you enjoyed the um, overview of priest healing glyphs uh, both PvP focused and uh, some PvE applicability as well and um, learned a little bit about the way that the glyphs work and how you can use that to your advantage um, perhaps while leveling or other things if you want to switch in and out. Okay, that's it. Um, over and out.